Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be working on finding the area and perimeter of irregular polygons like this one. Uh, the shape may look uh, sort of complicated, and at first you might not know what to do with this, um, but if you think about it for a minute, this polygon and um, other ones that we're going to look at today can actually be made by just putting two or more rectangles together. Okay, so let's get right to it. If I look at this polygon right here, I have uh, six sides, so it's a hexagon. Again, it's a regular hexagon, so it doesn't look like uh, like a stop sign or something where the sides and angles are all the same. Um, but it's a hexagon, and we know four out of the six sides. So if we're gonna find the perimeter and the area of this shape, we need to first figure out the missing sides, and then we can do some calculations. Like I said before, um, the polygons we're looking at today can be made by combining two or more rectangular shapes. And um, that should be a big hint for you guys on how we're gonna solve these problems because uh, I know you all know how to find the area and perimeter um, of rectangles. You guys have been working with rectangles for a couple weeks now, so that should be pretty easy for you guys. So if I take this shape and I can make it more clear uh, how just how it's a combination of rectangles by drawing a line or two. So with this shape right here, I'm gonna start by drawing this line across here. And maybe when I do that, it's obviously it's going to be easier to see how um, we can solve this problem by thinking of it like two rectangles instead of one larger polygon. Um, you could also do, you could also think of it like these two rectangles. If I did my line here instead, it doesn't really matter. Either way is fine. I think I'm going to use the first one, the first uh, combination to solve this problem. But again, either way is really fine. So what I've done now is I've broken up my shape into two rectangles. Let's use these rectangles to figure out our missing sides and then we'll solve for our perimeter and area. Okay, so we can see that on the bottom rectangle we have a length of 10 centimeters. That means that since opposite sides of a rectangle are equal, that this length here is also going to be equal to 10 centimeters. And since we know that this portion of that side, of that 10 centimeters, is 6, then the missing portion over here that's marked in blue is going to be equal to 4. And then by following the same rule as earlier, since we know that this width of the top rectangle is 4 centimeters, we know that the, the side up the top here, that width is also going to be 4 centimeters. Okay, so there's one of our missing sides right there. Uh, let's get some of these other numbers out of the way. The other side we're going to find just the same way. If we look again at the bottom rectangle, we see it has a width of 2 centimeters, which means that the other side is also 2 centimeters. And now if we look at the, the, the length here of the entire shape, it's 9 centimeters from top to bottom. And if this part right here is 2, that means this missing part over here is going to be 7, because 7 plus 2 is 9, and again, opposite sides are equal, so let's move that over here, and we, th we know that this side is going to be 7 centimeters also. Okay, let's do perimeter first. So, our perimeter is just going to be the sum of all the sides, just like you would do with any other shape. Um, if I want to just add these one by one, we have 10 plus 9 is 19 plus 4 more is 13. I'm sorry, 10 plus 9 is 19 plus 4 more is 23 plus 7 more is 30 plus 6 more is 36 plus 2 more is going to be 38. So our total perimeter is going to be 38 centimeters. Area is going to be a little bit different. To do the area, we're going to have to find the area of both rectangles and then just add them together. Uh, this is pretty easy again. The area of the bottom rectangle, we know that the area of a rectangle is just length times width. So we have 10 times 2. So it's going to be 20 square centimeters or centimeters squared. And the area of the top rectangle is just 4 times 7. That means it's going to be 28.
And if we add those two together, we get a total area of 48 square centimeters or centimeters squared. Okay, I know that this bottom rectangle looks like it should be a lot bigger than um, the top one and really it's smaller. It's because I think when this drawing was made, the this height of two centimeters is kind of off. Uh, uh, let's do another one. This one is a little more complicated than our last one. We actually have a, uh, let's see, it's not a hexagon this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an octagon. Again, it's an irregular octagon, so that means the sides are different lengths, the angle, some of the angles are different. Um, so we're gonna solve this the same way we solved the other one uh, by thinking of this as a combination of rectangles. Again, there's a couple different ways you could do this. Uh, you could draw some line, you could draw like a line going across here and there. And thinking of this like one big long rectangle and then two tiny ones on the top. You could also think of this like drawing this line here. So it's kind of messy. And also here. And thinking of it like uh, two bigger ones on the side with a skinnier one in the middle. It really doesn't matter. I, um, I will go ahead and do it like this. Let's go ahead and find the missing sides first. Uh, we are gonna need to know, well, these are all rectangles. Um, we're assuming that. So since this side over here is five centimeters, we're gonna assume that this side over here is also five centimeters. My writing's a little messy today, sorry. And then, let's see, we're missing uh, this side right here. And this is another one where you we know opposite sides are the same on a rectangle. So if this is three centimeters up here, then we know the bottom's gonna be three centimeters. Same with this one. And if this entire base right here is 10 centimeters, and this section is three, and that's another three, um, that's a total of six, which leaves us with four left over to be the length of this middle section. And again, if that bottom part is four, that means this top part is four also. And then finally, we just have one more missing side, which is right here. And I think, again, since we're assuming these are rectangles, it's going to be the same as the one across from it. Two centimeters. So now we should have all of the sides. Okay, let's go ahead and find the perimeter and area of the shape again, just like we did with the last one. We'll do perimeter first. Again, by just adding up all the sides, we have uh, 10 centimeters. I'll check them off as I go so you guys can see. We have 10 centimeters plus five is 15, plus three more is 18, plus two more is 20, plus four more is 24, plus two more is 26, plus three more is 29, and then finally plus five more is 34. So our final perimeter is gonna be 34 centimeters. For the area, we're gonna to have to find the area of all three of these rectangles and then add them up. I think the outside ones are pretty easy. Uh, three times five is gonna be 15 square centimeters for the area of that shape. Same thing over here, 15 square centimeters. The only one that's a little bit weird is this middle section. Uh, this section in here. We know that the the length here is four. We actually don't know the height. We never figured out the, the height of this or the, the width of this rectangle in the middle. Um, and again, we have to use sort of like our, um, our opposites here. If we know that the entire length from top to bottom of one of these side rectangles is five centimeters, then, and this section is gonna be two, then we know the leftover section is gonna be th three centimeters. I think this can be the only tricky part about um, finding these areas and perimeters is filling in all the missing sides. Anyways, three times four gives us a final area of, or a area of 12 square centimeters in the middle. Okay, so we have 15 over here 15 over here and 12 over here. 
So that's 30 plus 12 more is 42. So our final area is going to be 42 square centimeters or centimeters squared. Okay, guys, I hope that made sense to you. Um, as always, you can email me or message me on Classroom if um, you have some questions about this or there's some confusion. Um, and I hope this is making sense to you. There is an assignment um, that asks you to do some of these on your own. So uh, take a look in Classroom and have a great week.